Hello and welcome back to another edition of Tip TV Mining, brought to you by Blytheway and Bear Dolbear. I'm Charlie Gibson, not for the first time in my life, as you can see, I am completely painless. Now, the sort of stocks we'd like to bring you, as you know, are the ones that have performed, in this case, up 30% in under two weeks. There might be a couple of reasons for that. One is it might be the, the appointment of the new managing director, James Campbell, and an extra beers man. Or it could be the fact that he's now done his first deal, which is an earning agreement with a, a, an outfit called Vutomi. And joining us now from a blustery, windy, windy and cold Cape Town, we have the man in question. We have James Campbell, who is the managing director of Botswana Dim Diamonds, speaking to us all the way from Cape Town. James, very good afternoon to you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. My pleasure, Charlie, and it's lovely to be on the, uh, this business television. Excellent. Tell us, how miserable is it down at, uh, in Darwin, Cape Town at the moment, on a scale of 1 well, to 10? Charlie, in terms of miserableness, it's probably the scale of 10. This is our summer, and it's absolutely <laughs> magnificent. <laughs> I wish, I wish, uh, all I can say is it's, it's not, of course, that I'm jealous or anything else, but actually I am <laughs> profoundly jealous. So, I'm, you know, you can't imagine it. I mean, you know, it's not surprising that the whole of London decamps Cape Town in the first week of February. Anyway, enough of that. Tell us about this deal that you've done for Botswana Diamonds and the Vatomi earning. Uh, this deal is, I think, particularly, Charlie, important for, for Botswana Diamonds in that it gives Botswana Diamonds a, a much larger portfolio of projects, stretching all the way back from grassroots exploration through to deposits, through to, in fact, some inferred resources. So in, if I kind of summarize that, it gives Botswana Diamonds a, a greater likelihood of making a commercial discovery. And in, in this case, tell, tell us a little bit about the properties. I see that the, the lead property in, in Vutomi is something called Frischgewacht. And excuse my pronunciation there, but first of all, it probably means something. Secondly, uh, you know, I always say the clue is in your name, or it has been historically, Botswana Diamonds. It was diamonds in Botswana. But this is in, in South Africa, isn't it? Yes, well, Charlie, firstly, I'd like to compliment you on your pronunciation <laughs> of Frischgewacht. Is probably better than mine. And if I could possibly deal with your, your second question first uh, about why South Africa and why Botswana diamonds, and then I'll jump straight into making a comment on, on Friskevach. Uh, my view, and it's now shared by the board of Botswana diamonds view, is that South Africa is actually underexplored. And perhaps there are quite a few reasons for that, maybe one of which is the perception of high risk and high barriers to entry. And if one looks at stocks on the A market and maybe on the TSX as well, you'll find there are very few, if any, diamond explorers in South Africa. And for a long period of time, De Beers was the only explorer in the country. And they, in fact, have not been exploring for many years, but they are making a big entry back. So what does this mean? This basically means that South Africa has missed uh, much of the last diamond exploration rushes, if you call it, call it that. And importantly, it's missed the application of what we would call third generation exploration technology. And, and why that latter part is, is important is that many of your, your listeners and viewers may be aware of what African Diamonds and the De Beers joint venture did on AK6, which is now the Kuroi mine, which was the application of third generation exploration technology to convert a 1960s discovery, which was small and low grade, into something which is a phenomenal world-class mine. So I, I just wanted to give a very brief introduction about why I think South Africa is actually a good place to work. <laughs> the, the, the other part of, about South Africa, of course, is that the magnificent infrastructure. We've got the roads, we've got the, the railways, we've got the, the banks, we've got water, we have power. So of course, the, the barriers uh, to entry of developing a mining project are, are that much lower as well. And so I'm, I'm a great fan of, of, of Africa. I'm a great fan of Botswana. I'm a great fan of South Africa. And I truly believe that South Africa is probably one of the next frontiers in terms of diamond exploration. The, the, I, I see that the, the Friskavast is, is, what, 300 kilometers north of Johannesburg. So is it in the environ loosely of the Venetia, De Beers Venetia mine, which is one of De Beers' great long-life diamond mines, which is in the Limpopo province. It, it must be around that area. But is there a, a geological, insofar as you can make one, is, 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 
is there geological not continuity, but the, are, are, do they come from the same thing, the same system? Uh, Charlie, very, very good question. Uh, the Venetia mine is actually 500 kilometers or so north of Johannesburg, and this mine is 300 kilometers or so, but it is immediately adjacent to what was probably one of the world's richest diamond mines, that of Marsfontein, which had a phenomenal payback of only three and a half days. Uh, this mine was operated by the De Beers and Southern Era joint venture. It w the pipe was only 0.4 hectares in size, so it was very small. Uh, but the average grade was just over 170 carats per 100 tonnes. And as I mentioned a moment ago, it, it had a three and a half day payback of the $25 million investment. Immediately adjacent to that is the current Clip Springer mine, which is on care and maintenance and is owned by Assa Mining PLC, a name listed company. So this is the kind of diamond belt that uh, Batomi and uh, Thu Botswana Diamonds we are now exploring. So tell us a little bit, t t tell us about the prospectivity of, of, this, of this particular prospect. You know, you're an ex De Beers man, so you know, I guess you know it, but you can tell us, you know, did De Beers have, have the option to have a look at it? Did they uh, overlook it? For, was it a mistake that they overlooked it? Was it too small for them? And what do we know about the, the Kimberlite potential or the alluvial potential of this particular ground that you're picking up? Charlie, some excellent questions. And in fact, uh, I spent my early married life on the farm Friskewacht in, in the uh, mid to late 80s. So this area is actually quite familiar with me. And, and I was part of the De Beers exploration team, which made many of the discoveries in the Limpopo province at that time. Uh, what we're looking at now, uh, what we are looking at in terms of, of geology, we're looking at a, a set of uh, on echelon dike swarms with small blows actually on them. Uh, I mentioned the size of the Marsfontein blow, which was 0.4 hectares. And indeed, De Beers did extensive sampling in the area, and they did some drilling in the area too as well. But we believe, and, and we've certainly kind of demonstrated that recently, uh, which is in our news release of, of, of Monday, uh, that maybe the drilling wasn't quite as extensive as it could have been. And we are already intersecting uh, dikes between 1 and 17 meters thick. Just to give you a sense of perspective, the average thickness of the dikes on the Clip Springer mine are 0.8 meters. It, so quite a bit thicker than that. What's the next step for you? Is it is it to define a resource and, and then go to bulk sampling, or or and and do you have the budgets? And I suppose the follow up question is is going to be how does this alter the focus of Botswana diamonds between its its Botswana assets and now its South African assets? No, very good. The, the first part of uh, our drilling program is to define the geometry of this body, which would give us a, a, a volume or a tonnage estimate. Uh, the Vatomi shareholders have previously done bulk sampling in the area, and they achieved a rough diamond price of $180 a carat. Now, with diamonds, that there are five different uh, variables you need to look at, uh, the three most important of which are, are volume, grade, and diamond value. With the drilling, we'll also be producing samples for microdiamond analysis. And, and we plan the, uh, by the middle of this year to have a low inferred resource on this particular property. Now, that will then give us the information to decide, do we take it up the resource uh, ladder towards a, a high inferred resource and then move into indicated resources and, and the various uh, pre-feasibility and feasibility studies. The other two things that we will be doing on the Vatomi project would be also looking at what we call resource extension in the area, because what we're looking at immediately is only a 1.2 kilometer dike uh, strike length, but this dike does go on for uh, approximately four kilometers. So we will be looking at either side of that too. And then thirdly, we'll be looking at a very extensive uh, beginning to look, should I say, sorry, uh, a very extensive swathe of land of some 50,000 hectares, uh, much of which is in the Kimberley, Coffeefontein, Jagusfontein corridor of Kimberlites and, and significant an anomalies. So we can prioritize that for phase two. This is all going to be done in conjunction with our two key projects in Botswana. Uh, as many of your viewers would be aware that we have a joint venture with Al Rosa. Uh, and, and they are busy with grassroots exploration in the Kalahari and also with re resource evaluation work in the Arapa region, in particular AK 21, 22 and 23. 
And, and then the, the fascinating joint venture we have with uh, BCL, Bamangwato Concession Limited, which is sadly BCL is in provisional liquidation at the moment. And uh, we will soon understand as to whether it will be liquidated or whether it will be bought in, in 30 days time. But we've had some very tantalizing results from that joint venture, which would actually like to follow up and assess. And then your question in terms of funding, we we will, of course, need, need to fund this and we are busy considering how we should best actually approach this at the moment. Excellent. All right. Well, James, that's all we got time for, I'm afraid. But thank you very much indeed. And we will look forward to following the story very closely in the next weeks, months and years. Ladies and gentlemen, that was James Campbell, the MD of Botswana Diamonds there, talking to us from Cape Town. I'm afraid that's all we got time for today. But uh, be with us next week. Join us again and we'll be looking for more companies, which if they haven't given us 30% in two weeks, we hope they have the prospects to give us 30% in two weeks. And uh, in the meantime, you have a capital day.